Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, in which we are discussing the nitrogen mustards as an example of uh, anti-cancer chemotherapeutic agents. Okay, right, so we discussed how we have now added this uh, alkyl group of the nitrogen mustard drug onto uh, a guanine organic base within our DNA strand. Now, we all, I also elucidated to at the end of the previous video that this other chloroethyl group could go through the exact same reaction. So let's expand on that now. So basically, what can happen is again, this carbon here can attack this nitrogen here, okay? And it will spit off the chloride in the process. So it will form an ammonium ion. And it's doing this whilst it's attached to the guanine organic base. So let's draw this. Now, I don't want to have to draw out the guanine every time I do it. So I'm just going to abbreviate it to a G, basically. Okay? So cunningly, I've abbreviated that to a G. And basically, here is the ethyl group of the nitrogen mustard drug, which is bound to that guanine already. Here's the nitrogen. Then we have this methyl group coming off, and then we have this so far untouched chloroethyl group. But of course, uh, it's about to undergo this reaction. So now let's show it undergoing this reaction where it forms an ammonium ion. So what's going to happen is if we've got the guanine here, again we've got these two methylene groups, which I'll start just denoting as CH2 groups. Okay. And here's the nitrogen, here's the methyl group off the nitrogen, and now what's going to happen is that it's going to form one of these cycles. It's going to form an ammonium ion with this cycle, this free-membered ring in it, okay? And that's going to mean, basically, that this nitrogen now has a positive charge on it at the center, and the chloride anion gets away with the negative charge, okay? Now, this is the ammonium ion, so this is this unstable intermediate. Now what's going to happen is this bond here is going to break, and the nitrogen is going to take back both of the electrons that belong to it, that are in this bond, and it's going to form a carbonium ion. So let's discuss that now. Okay, so here's the guanine organic base here, and the nitrogen mustard drug is linked to this guanine organic base. So here are these two methylene groups again. Here's the nitrogen with the methyl group off. Okay, it's still, it's no longer got a positive charge actually because it's formed the carbonium ion now. So the positive charge has been transferred to the carbon. Okay, so this is the carbonium ion. And now all this carbonium ion has to do is find another guanine organic base basically. And then what it can do is it can link onto that other guanine organic base. And let me put a great big cross through that positive sign there. It shouldn't be there. And all it needs to do, basically, is bind to another guanine base. And then what you'll have is guanine. And then you'll have this drug molecule, this nitrogen mustard here, these methylene groups, the nitrogen in the middle with the methyl group sticking off the side. And then these two methylene groups here, and then finally another guanine or organic base over here, which this methylene group here is linked to. Okay, so what you can do is link two guanines together with this drug, i.e. you can form crosslinks. Now, the question is, do the two guanines that it links have to be on opposite strands, i.e. if we have the two strands of DNA here, do they have to be on opposite strands, or can they be on the same strand? Well, the answer is either. If they're on opposite strands, then you call it an inter, meaning between strand crosslink. So this is an inter strand crosslink if the two guanines that the drug is linking uh, is are on opposite strands, basically. That would be an interstrand crosslink, okay? And if they're on the same strand, then you will call it an intra-strand crosslink, which basically uh, means within the same strand, okay? So you can have inter- and intra-strand crosslinks being formed by these nitrogen mustard drugs. Okay, now what is the effect 
of these inter- and intra-strand cross things that are being formed by these nitrogen mustard drugs. Well, if we've got, if we imagine some of these strands, let's say we've got an inter-strand cross thing, so we've got this drug molecule here. So this is our nitrogen mustard drug molecule. This is this thing, if you like, here. And it's an inter-strand cross thing. What is going to happen when transcription happens? What is going to happen when DNA replication happens? So, in order for transcription to happen, we'll start with transcription. If we want to make mRNA from the DNA, what has to happen? You have to break the hydrogen bonds between the organic bases down the middle, and you have to open the two strands so that the RNA polymerase can read one of them. But now you've got this drug molecule holding the two strands together. You've got this inter-strand cross thing. So you're not going to be able to open those two strands. So RNA polymerase is not going to work. So basically what you're going to produce is total reduction in transcription. So you're going to get reduction in transcription. Okay, and this, by the way, is happening, I will stress this again, in all cells that this drug gets into. It is not selective for cancer cells, so it's going to stop transcription and therefore the production of any sort of proteins in all cells that it gets into an axon. Okay, uh, so you're going to get reduction in transcription. Now what else? What about DNA replication? What about copying the DNA? Well, for that, again, what you need to do is open the DNA strands. You have to split them apart, and then the DNA polymerase has to work on the two. If you've got this drug molecule linking the two strands together, it's not going to be able to split them apart. So, again, it's going to stop DNA replication, and that is interesting. Reduced transcription is interesting, but stopping uh, DNA replication is very interesting because... Uh, in order to divide cells, in order to get cells to divide, uh, you need to copy the DNA because both of the daughter cells need a full copy of the genome. So if you stop DNA replication, you stop cell um, replication, basically. You stop cell division. Okay, so if you put this drug on cancer cells, which are rapidly dividing, it will stop them dividing. And that is the basis of its use as a chemotherapeutic agent. Okay, it will also do it to all other cells in your body which are dividing, which is the basis of all its side effects. And it's also going to stop transcription as well, protein synthesis in cells. That's also going to help you stop uh, the cell cycling as well, because in order to go from being one cell, okay, to being two cells, not only do you need to copy the genome, but you need to copy the proteome as well, which means all the proteins within the cell, all the proteins that are essential for um, cellular function, for life. You need to double the numbers of them, and therefore you're going to have to make loads more. So if you can't uh, make protein because the uh, nitrogen mustard has stopped your DNA from opening up, then uh, you're not going to be able to produce that protein and you're not going to be able to divide. So both of these actions are going to stop cell division. So cell division is going to stop. Now, it also has a cytotoxic effect on the, um, on the cell as well because when you make this modification to the DNA, this modification can be picked up, basically, by the P53 pathway. So there are certain proteins known as ATM and ATR which detect, um, detect DNA damage, basically. And they will detect these drugs, these alkylating agents, which are bound to the DNA. Okay, so ATM stands for ataxia telangiectasia mutated. Okay. Um, ATR, I believe, stands for ataxia telangiectasia and rad free related protein or something like that. Uh, but basically, these are proteins which recognize DNA damage. And in response to the DNA damage, they activate other um, proteins known as checkpoint kinase 1 or CHK1 and also CHK2, checkpoint kinase 2. And these then activate P53. Okay? So, 
If you get P53 active for a very long time, what it can do is promote apoptosis. So, basically, P53 is a transcription factor, okay? And it increases the expression of a huge number of genes. It increases the expression of genes which stop the cell cycle. So this is also going to help stop the cell cycle. It also uh, produces um, uh, proteins involved in DNA repair. So it's going to have a go at trying to repair the damage uh, that you've done uh, with these alkylating agents. But you know if you're giving the alkylating agents continuously, you're going to be continuously reforming new damage and basically, if the P53 remains elevated in the cell for a long time, then the cell interprets that to mean that the DNA damage just isn't getting fixed, okay? So we're failing, basically. And it then starts to produce uh, pro-apoptotic proteins, which cause the cell to commit suicide. So it can also actually cause these cancer cells to commit suicide, basically, uh, by, um, by activating the P53 pathway. Okay, uh, so uh, that's all I have to say on uh, nitrogen mustard chemotherapy. In the next video, we'll continue our discussion with other um, types of anti-cancer chemotherapy.